You know what, chat? I'm feeling ready for some dumb <laughs> Sorry, let me re-record that so we can use it in the intro. You know what, chat? I'm feeling ready for some dumb stuff. I've had this video on the back burner for a bit since someone recommended it to me in my YouTube, and I did not, I just, I just didn't want to watch it, you know? We deal with a lot of, like, conspiracy, all sorts of, you know, pseudoscience type things on the channel, and so... Sometimes she gets a little tiring to constantly disprove the most ridiculous things. But, uh, you know, today it's not the Megalodon. It's not Crabzilla. We haven't seen Crabzilla in a while. I should get back on the Crabzilla train. Today it is Skyfish. Some sort of alien, I don't know. I, like, briefly panned through the video, and it's some, like, camera effect alien thing. I mean, I'll let them explain but apparently there are alien fish in the sky, so just get ready. <laughs> I think I liked the wombat intro better. Bro, it's like I'm watching, um, it's like an ad at the, at the movie theater. Like when your movie isn't on yet, but they're still, <laughs> it does look like it was made in iMovie, but they're still playing like the ads for crappy movies that are come out soon. On second thought, this was 100% made in Blender with like a template and then thrown over a background. In my last video, we talked a little bit about energy orbs and how experts say that you can't see these energy orbs with your own eyes, but cameras can. And this reminded me of an old paranormal mystery known as rods or air rods. It is believed by the paranormal community that these air rods are e something like crop circles and that even the skeptics admit they exist. The only question is what they really are. Invisible to the eye, they are picked up by cameras all over the world. So they're a camera effect? I mean, it just kind of, I haven't seen it yet, but it just, if it's only picked up by cameras, something tells me it's just like an effect of exposure or something on a camera lens. Either living creatures, atmospherical beast, or some sort of non-living anomaly, such as energy. And whatever they are, you can't see them, but cameras can detect them. Just like the energy orbs. Now this all started in 1994 when a <laughs> is man- Is that it? Bro, that is an insect or a bird flying on an overexposed camera. He has a hat? Skyfish the discovery of rods? Oh no. No, bro. Bro, that's just like a bird or like a, a, a bug flying and the camera is overexposed so it records it multiple times. No way he has a hat. I thought it was going to be like some dude recanting his small experience with it. There's <laughs> there's no way he has... This better not be his name. If his name is Jose Escamilla and he's wearing a Jose Escamilla film, you think he's the only one who made this hat? He like designed this hat on a custom hat website and he's like, guys, guys, buy the hat. It was only him. He's the only one who wanted to wear it named Jose, who was a professional film producer and editor, saw a strange image on one of his photographs. He said at first he thought they were just insects flying across the camera, but as time went by he kept seeing them and he wasn't 100% sure what they were, so he started to investigate. I can solve it. It's called overexposure. Sorry, it's called motion blur. Long exposure, I think is the correct term. Long exposure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because this looks like a fish. And after a lot of research and analyzing, he believed that these were some unknown creatures still unknown to science. He stated that these rods, which he named, had a cylinder body, multiple sets of wings, moved super fast, and could grow or be up to six feet long. Maybe even... Okay. Move super fast. Bird slash insect. Wings, bird slash insect. Long, bird slash insect on long exposure grow up to six feet, the fact that multiple flying things can cause this effect. One professor stated that cameras are capable of producing artifacts, something in the picture that was never really there. And this professor did a lot of his own testing, and he did capture things that kind of look like rods. And he believed that he had debunked this theory, and so- I mean, that's a pretty shitty attempt. If you literally just turn on long exp- like it's- you can do this on your iPhone. Your iPhone is capable of this. You can take, if you have an iPhone, there's like a long exposure mode, I think, in the photo thing. Yeah, you can literally, yeah, they, when it's dark, cameras turn on the low exposure thing. You can literally turn that on and then run across the screen and you will become a skyfish. Like, it's not, 
a particularly difficult phenomenon to understand. And there's a reason that if you can't see it, but a camera can, it's because it's an artifact. Even when you look at Wikipedia's page today, sadly where most people go looking for the truth, it says that these rods are nothing more than an optical illusion. Now I'm not saying that these rods Jose, who sadly died not too long ago. How many hats does he own related to Skyfish? <laughs> this is a completely different hat. This one just says rods on it. <laughs> Who's designing these hats? And how many of them has he designed and purchased? Look to these pictures back in the 90s that this professor took. There is a very happy hat shop somewhere in the United States <laughs> that is just constantly producing these. And he knew right away that these were not rods. He stated that rods, just like any other bug or insect, has their own footprint, their own flight path. You can easily tell if it's a moth or a bird or an air. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty clearly like a moth. There's multiple people there. Look, those are all, I mean, it's a creepy photo in general, but there's all a bunch of people there. You know what this probably is? Just based on flight pattern, it's like a duck or something, or some rare bird that they're all looking at, and then it's been long exposed. Plane. And a rod or is a, a rod. And to me, that makes a heck of a lot of sense, especially if we're talking about video footage. And these rods are captured all the time in pictures and on tape. And they have even no been way. seen in space and underwater. You just that disproved <laughs> they've been seen in space and underwater? Bro, this is literally a duck. This is literally a mallard taking off. You've got to be kidding me. You can't possibly be called... <laughs> Please. For the sake of argument, let's just say that these rods, these six foot long insect looking things exist. And they are underwater, they're in space, just all around us all the time, and you can't even see them with your own eyes. Well then, what could they possibly be? Wait, hold My on, I don't accept your conceit. <laughs> I'm not with you. He's assuming I'm with him. It's like, okay, well... This is the conceit that, no, 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 I do not accept your conceit. The most extreme theory is that these are not living things at all. They are tiny alien drones that are watching and recording everything we and all living things on Earth do. No way. There are many examples in movies where people from the CIA or the NSA make a tiny little bug such as a fly that sneaks into our rooms of our enemies and records what they say. So if there are aliens that are highly advanced and they know we exist, I don't think that this theory is that crazy. No, yep, it is. no it, is, it is that crazy. Why is there a proverb on the screen? That's also a very creepy proverb, by the way. A very threatening thing to say in a Bible. But Now that's what I call leaping to conclusions. Yeah, I would say so. I would say it's a, it's a little bit of a leap to go from, oh, you know, there's maybe intelligent life out there to the intelligent life knows about us and is watching us by putting invisible drones that for some reason our camera can capture. They're intelligent enough to make it so that humans can't see it, but oh man, they forgot about our little glass and light apparatuses. People always say that God is always watching us. Well, maybe aliens are too. <laughs> Stop Another fading theory that is that these are atmospherical beasts. They are born in the sky. They can live in space. They don't need Earth to survive, and they possess abilities that we know nothing about. What? A lot of people believe that atmospherical beasts do exist. Jose stated shortly before he died that this phenomena is real. And for those of you who don't believe in it, well, that's your prerogative. You can believe what you want or disbelieve. But the fact is, these things are here. They are doing something here. We don't know what they're doing, but they are doing it. That was the most nothing sentence. They're doing something here. We don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it. Whatever they're doing, they're doing that. I don't... <clears throat> I don't know, man. Do it. What do do? Believe you know? I guess this one's not particularly harmful. I like believing in the megalodon and that kind of thing can be slightly harmful to. I don't want to talk about the pterosaur right here. Can we not acknowledge the end here? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Should we go on a? Should I do an Avian Jays adventure where I go looking for skyfish? Yeah, that is one of the best parts about being a conspiracy theorist. I am slightly jealous of conspiracy theorists in that they can just make anything up and they can convince a good amount of gullible people that it is the case. You can make up essentially everything. It can be as ridiculous or easily explainable as you want of a phenomenon and it will still probably gain traction just because people are always looking for crazy shit. Whoa!